Uh, this is a treat to join you for a couple reasons. One, I have a constituent here, Mark, who takes me to the Microsoft campus and brainwashes me regularly, and he has to speak very slowly to explain concepts to me. So, Mark, I appreciate your educational process. We know that uh, you're in alliance with Google on this issue, which is nice to see peace across the valley here on this issue. Um, this really is a treat to get to work on this white spaces issue. Um, and let me just say, as a matter of principle, you always have to decide who's on the good side and who, who's on the bad side. It is clear that the white hats are on the side of white spaces, okay? So let's just make a principle statement to begin with. And there are several reasons uh, for that. I think that there are some principles that maybe I can allude to as to why I've been such a passionate advocate for moving forward with the white space uh, possibility and promise. I'll just start with the first principle, which is our effort to facilitate the advancement of a white spaces uh, protocol uh, really follows the basic principle of the growth of American innovation. If you are for innovation, you are for white spaces. Perhaps nothing right now on the techn technology horizon gives us as much open field running room for innovation to flourish. And if you believe in promise, if you believe in the human intellect, if you believe our ability to surmount very small interference issues which we are now surmounting, if we can go to the moon, as they say, we can do white spaces. And it is clear, and I think that the evidence shows that that is the case in spades that is happening in the last few months. So basically, if you believe innovation is the driving force of the American economy, then you ought to be for the flourish of the white spaces protocol. And that's one of the reasons I'm so passionate for it. Second, there are those who have not been enlightened quite yet in this regard. And there is a principle I want to alert you to that sometimes stalks the halls of Congress. And that is a principle, uh, uh, something I've learned is that some people uh, turn Congress into a contest of interests disguised as a debate of principles. We are hearing people that are debating, trying to argue that this is something about principles. This is really an argument about turf and about interests. And we need to follow the principle of American innovation and the principle of being able to surmount technological challenges rather than the interests that are simply interested in maintaining protection of turf and vested interests. And that is, I believe, largely what this debate is about. And we are going to succeed on it. Third. This is, a, this is where we're going to get over arguments about geography and think about issues of intellectual ability. You know, we've always thought of geography, we've thought of sort of the possibility uses of spectrum as a map on the surface of the earth, that there's this, you know, discrete parcels like we have geography, like we divide up our states into counties and our counties into municipalities. We need to start thinking of it as the virtual intellectual space rather than the geographic space. This is a different way of thinking of assets, but it's how, it's how we need to start to think about this asset, particularly the spectrum asset. The fourth reason, and this is a little particular specific to me, but I want to mention it. It is my view that the next great revolution in the US economy is going to be the clean energy revolution where we essentially decarbonize our economy and use the power of the human intellect and the technological geniuses, many of which are represented in this room, to create whole new systems of how we generate and use energy. And the ability to use the white spaces spectrum that at some point will be a part of this revolution where virtually every machine we use that uses energy will be reporting and connected in some way to a grid-based smart grid system that can really maximize our use of energy, this is a, will be a pivotal piece of that development. Now, I know some people think this is a stretch, but when I think of our ability to beat global warming and our ability to create millions of green collar jobs, it is somewhat dependent on our ability to maximize the use of these white spaces, and this is a way to do it. So these four principles, I believe, are the ones that should drive us to continue to allow the technology to develop to demonstrate our ability to do this without interference and really drive American job growth. And I just report to you, basically, there are those who, not surprisingly, want to change the goalposts repeatedly as this situation goes on. And there are those who want to say that we don't develop any rules or any regulations that we can work under or, have, or target our innovation towards 
until the last generation of this technology is developed. Well, we did not wait for the FAA to develop some airspace rules until we developed the 747. We had a progress of technology. We can, we can progress at the same time on this rulemaking procedure as we're developing this technology to its ultimate culmination. We need to do that. We're going to continue to push, in, push the agencies in that direction. You saw a comment uh, from the chairman a few days ago to suggest we're going to continue on that path, and we're going to keep some, a little congressional heat and pressure to make sure that we continue on that. So I'm here to uh, say that I am uh, inspired by this group's efforts. I believe it's going to be one piece of the mosaic of American technological progress. We are going to put pedal to the metal to get this done. And I will uh, solicit and receive any good ideas any of you have on how we can make this happen. Let me just suggest one thing that may be obvious, but I want to reiterate it. Um, there are 535 people within a quarter mile here who work for you and the businesses you represent. And today and the next day is a wonderful opportunity to share your ideas with them and the, the status of technology. Please exercise your constitutional right to petition your government for redress of grievances. And you would be highly and appropriately grieved if we don't recognize the maturation of this technology. Good luck, good hunting, and I'll see you at the victory party. Take care.